Hey guys, Anthony Piacciavone here back with another video. And in today's video, we're going to go over just two trades I took this past week. As you know, I've been showing my analysis on the market, seeing where we're, we think we're going to go and where I'm personally positioned in my swing account. But these two trades are going to be trades I took on my day trade account. So if you're new here and you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button because what I'm going to do is share videos each day and how I became a consistently profitable trader share the losses and the gains that I make and the reasoning behind trades that I take. So if you wanna learn more, then you're gonna to wanna to hit that subscribe button. Without further ado though, we're gonna dive into the charts. So the first trade that we're looking at is on ES futures. I personally trade ES, which is S&P 500 futures, and sometimes NASDAQ, which is the tech QQQ if you're looking at the ETFs, or SPY, SPY, if you're looking at ETFs. The first trade I took was on Tuesday. Tuesday morning, I personally have a short bias. So because of that, I'm looking to take short trades whenever we trade up into resistance. On Tuesday, we saw weakness overnight, just selling off from about uh, the 4070, 4080 area overnight, all the way down into the 4040s. And we opened up uh, about 4050, then just sold off. And I didn't want to chase any of that. So what I personally did was I got into short and you always want to look to the left after. So you just scroll to the left and you see where were the recent lows. So we had lows just below 4060 and then we had a low down at 4048. So I was personally targeting the 4048 sweep of liquidity uh, since I had the bear bias. I thought we would take that out before pushing back up and having a bigger retracement. So keeping that in mind, uh, I personally shared on the five and 15 minute chart on the daily time frame when I'm doing day trades. So on the open, we sold right off and I got in my short position just about 4037 and my stop was the highs that we just made near the open at about 4056. So one point above that, which ended up being 4057 as a stop, 21 point stop, TP being 21 points below around 4015 and we hit that around lunchtime and once we traded below, I actually moved my stops to break even and then I was away from my computer because I go work out at that time and I just let the trade run. That hit TP and you'll see most of my trades are honestly one to ones or two to ones. I don't really have many three to ones whatsoever when trading a ES or a NASDAQ. And it works out to my favor because usually I'm actually profitable about 75% of the time. So 75% of trades work in my favor and they are usually one to one, 1 1.5 to one or two to one. So with that probability, it works out to be okay. So we hit that and that was it for that day. And then I think uh, the next trade wasn't until Thursday or Friday. Friday was the next day, yeah. So Wednesday and Thursday, I was watching the market. We saw actually a big dump. Uh, Thursday we pushed up and then big dump throughout the afternoon and then right back up, trade into resistance to the left. So that would be a good, that would have been a really good short entry, just shorting the 4027 area, risking the highs around 4036 again on Thursday and then boom, just sold off. So overnight we sold off Friday into the core PCE inflation numbers and we were selling off before the numbers. So what we saw, what I personally did is I got in uh, 3990. I shorted just before the numbers came out with a stop being 17 points up and TP being two to one. So my TP was 3960 and this was a wick fill. So if I go back to the daily chart, you'll see that there was a wick from days ago. Right where my mouse is on Wednesday, January 25th. Whenever there is bearish momentum pushing to the downside, we've already swept liquidity to the upside and we have a close at a wick, then there's a high probability of us filling the wick, which means trading all the way down to the end of the wick. And this is a strategy I back test and it works a lot of time. So basically what happened was we had this huge wick, if you see where my mouse is. We traded up and we swept all highs. Then we traded down. So once we traded down and got the close on the wick, so essentially once we had uh, right here about February 21st, on this close, honestly right there, I could have gotten short. I was already shorting on my swing account, but I could have gotten short and then used the 3963 area as a TP for the wick fill and using stops as a one-to-one. -one. But I waited until the numbers were gonna come out. I personally believe they were gonna be bearish numbers and push the market down on Friday. So I got in the short 39.90, stop 17 points above, TP being 39.60. That hit TP, so it was plus 29 points that we hit uh, right away, essentially, with by 9 a.m. And then I just watched the market, and it was really choppy. So if you go back to the 15-minute chart, you'll see that uh, we had the big dump pre-market and then on the open 9:30 we pretty much traded sideways we went down 10 points 
up 10, 20 points, and then down 10, 20 points, and then up 10, 20 points. So, you know, if you're trading this, you would have got chopped up for sure. I personally was watching it, but I, I didn't really take any trades because that was a big trade for me. 29 points is huge. Uh, remember, you get $50 per one contract that you use on ES. So uh, 30 points times five is $1,500 if you're trading with one contract. And if you're trading multiple contact tracks, then you just add up the math. Um, it's a great trade. And if you don't have the account to use one full ES contract, I typically need about 30,000 or 25,000 in your account to be to safely use that without feeling any stress. But if you're not used to trading that amount, you can use the micros. I personally trade with the ES futures contracts and NASDAQ futures contracts, and I use the March contract. But those are just the two trades I took, um, two amazing trades. Honestly, that's all you really need. I didn't. I don't really. I haven't. I've been noticing that ever since January started this new year, I haven't been taking as many trades, partially because I have my larger bias in my swing account, and I'm just letting that play out while I'm taking you know one good high probability setup a week, maybe two trades a week, sometimes three trades a week, and it's been working out better for me because personally, I used to have like an over trading issue where I would take two three trades on the open. And I should be done for the day, but then I would catch myself looking at the market again just after lunchtime, let me one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, taking a few trades there and really getting chopped up and then giving back my profits in the morning. That was a huge habit I had um, last year. And this year has been a lot better. So I'm, I'm proud of myself for just taking the one trade, maybe two trades in a day and that's it. But lately, one trade a day and some days no trades. Uh, just because that's just what the market's been giving me. I've been seeing better opportunities or just, just picking and choosing my battles better and letting my swing trade play out. Take a look at my previous video if you want to see where I believe the market's going in the next week. Subscribe for more videos just like this and give it a thumbs up if you appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. That'll be coming out midweek. We'll do a midweek market update and then at the end of the week, again, go over the trades we took next week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.